<laughs> well, we already kind of introduced you. We um, said that you are yogas and you do Zoom meetings and you were going to share your insights. You have a Facebook page. That's Good Exchange um, on Facebook. So glad you're here with us today, Emily. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Uh, well, about a year ago, I left the corporate world and started doing adventure travel guiding. I'm a cyclist and a backpacker, hiker, all of that good stuff. And so I had a good year run of that <laughs> until recently. There hasn't been as much travel going on. Uh, but fortunately, I'd gotten my yoga certification and meditation teacher training certification done this past summer. So it was a nice time to kind of turn my attention to building that part of, of my offering. So that's what I've been doing the last few months is building that. Um, so I'm really grateful that I had that grounding <laughs> and the ability to reach out with that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So what inspired you to begin your meditations on the four agreements? And I saw in your, you, on your YouTube that you mentioned a fifth agreement. So tell us a little bit about that and who created the four agreements. Sure. Um, the reason I was inspired to do my first meditation offering using the Four Agreements was that it was a book that I'd had, I'd owned it for about five years, <laughs> and had been on my shelf. But I read it around the same time that I was building my personal meditation practice, and so it just really was, it just really resonated with me. Uh, it was written by Don Miguel Ruiz, and it's basically a summary of the Toltec civilization, the studies they did of different ancient religions and just philosophies, and they pretty much boiled it down to what truths were found in all these different schools of thought. And so to me, it was just like, wow, <laughs> this is really powerful and simple. And so the four agreements, and then now there's five, but the first one is be impeccable in your word. And so this past January, when I was beginning to meditate, that was just something that I just thought, okay, let me run through my head, like, as I'm living my day, am I being impeccable in my word? And it's just amazing how often it's like, oh, that's not impeccable. Hmm, this is not impeccable. And it really caused me to, like, sweep a lot of stuff out of my life. I mean, really make major choices and decisions and, and change really big things for myself. Because it's not only being impeccable to other people, but it's being impeccable to yourself, knowing what you tell yourself. If I'm going to make this a priority, or if this is important to me, like I would find myself in conflict <laughs> with what I told myself was important. So that was a really big one. Um, and then, yeah, this will take a while to go through all of them. Uh, but the second agreement is don't take anything personally is also really huge. People say and do all sorts of things. And so when you can remove, okay, someone else's word doesn't mean that's the truth for me and really get some perspective on what is truth and what, you know, what, when, what someone says says a lot more about them many times than it does about you. And so that I spent basically a month on the first agreement and a month on the second one. Uh, the third one is don't make assumptions which also is huge. So many, so many, uh, all of us yes. make assumptions all the time, right? Oh, I could, yes. never, <laughs> yeah. I could never say this because he would think that or she would do this or they wouldn't understand or all these things. And so when you remove, when, you know, so what I found was when I would have a challenge or something that was frustrating, I could kind of run it through these different agreements and one of them would definitely shine a light and give me some perspective of like, oh, I think I am making an assumption. Maybe I should just ask them <laughs> what they think. I mean, just having an uncomfortable conversation or, or thinking through why wouldn't I ask that uh, just, again, was really powerful. Uh, and then the fourth one, it sounds kind of kindergarten, but it's always do your best, which is also really big because it, it causes you to check in like and I really applied this for me in yoga because I had done yoga for 15 or 20 years in these you know Dallas studios where I would feel like oh do I look okay and you know really aware of of how I'm perceived and is my you know my body won't do what the teacher's body does and, and mentally beating myself up for 
for what my body was and what a terrible way to spend an hour. <laughs> yeah, I'll remember that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so when I have that like, oh, my best is the best I can really do and this is the body I have and I'm just gonna go and 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 keep trying and that like when I really made that commitment to just go a couple times a week and just do my best, it was amazing how my body transformed. And I wasn't even really looking for that to happen. <laughs> but I think letting go of worry, all the things I was doing at the same time, I just, it really was amazing. And it really just made me want to share it with people because I'd struggled so long <laughs> being yeah. like with just carrying anxiety around. Uh, so much pressure on women to look a certain way. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, so yeah, so I really studied the four agreements and spent a lot of time with those. And then the fifth agreement, he wrote a book later, and it's be skeptical, but learn to listen, which I also love that because it's like, don't cling to any one thing so tightly that you're not willing to, to, to acknowledge that there's more that we don't know than we know. <laughs> and that's true for everyone. I mean, that's true for science today. I mean, that I think it's funny when people are like, well, that can't be proven. And it's like, well, not yet. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So, um, so yeah, it, hopefully that answers the question. It did. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Okay, let's see. Um, can you explain to us the importance of meditation, especially in our stressful times today? Um, how can we focus ourselves to meditate fully? Um, and is there a time frame in which it is most beneficial to us emotionally um, for just our brain power? Just uh, sure. simple brain power. What And what is your favorite position on yoga? I want to know that. My favorite, my favorite <laughs> yoga position? Yes, I want to know that too. <laughs> hmm. Well, it's funny. Um, headstand, I wouldn't say is my favorite, but it's one I had told myself I will never get, I will never do that. And what? I now can do a headstand. Yeah. And like, oh, so I, wow. I mean, I, I'm I'm just, yeah, well, I can show you how, like I, I had a wonderful teacher who showed me kind of like, okay, here's, here's what you can do to get your upper body ready and then get against the wall and just practice. And it's the kind of thing I truly, it took me it took me 15 years of telling myself I will never get to do that and then about a year of struggling and it's just funny how these things it's so mental and then it's like once you're like oh I can do that then it becomes simple and it's just like it's I love that's what I love so much about yoga I mean it's like the lesson is in the struggle and that's what life is right <laughs> so it's so applicable you there's so many lessons and it is it's not about making your body look like a pretzel. It's like, you can do that, but that isn't really the point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so same with meditation. And so I really, I've started kind of using the word mindfulness more than meditation, just because that's really where you begin is practicing mindfulness and looking at your brain as a muscle and you're getting control of your own brain instead of letting these thoughts just take over we are like oh i'm anxious i'm fearful i'm this i'm that and i'm not i don't say that to minimize those emotions i mean i i've been i i have i haven't really suffered from what i would call anxiety attacks but i have many close friends that really have and so i don't i don't say that lightly but i do think that you can practice recognizing so what med meditation or mindfulness training is really just practicing clearing your mind and then as soon as you're aware of a thought mindfully letting it go and resuming your focus on whether it's your breath or just whatever you're looking at there's a million ways you can do it there's really i don't think a right or wrong it's what it's what you'll do <laughs> is the right thing and so back to the, like the time of day it's whenever you can do it. And I really recommend people get started doing just a couple minutes, a few times a day, like tie it to something, you know, either before a meal or, you know, upon waking or at lunchtime or like whenever you go to the bathroom, take one or two extra minutes and just practice. And you'll find if you're kind to yourself when you recognize that thought and think, okay, brain, thank you for doing your job. 
and you watch yourself be able to let that thought go and you practice again and then here's another thought <laughs> and you just practice again and again but you're practicing kindness to yourself instead of like oh I'm stupid I'll never get this because who wants to sit down and flog themselves <laughs> for a minute you're then you're going to just dread it and not want to do it and so the whole point is how you treat yourself and really having compassion for yourself thinking like taking care of your brain thinking of it as like doing a kind service for it now like i really do i don't say it like braggy but like now i really look forward i give myself 20 minutes every morning and it's just like ah <laughs> like oh, and i love it because like i use the little object lesson of a bowl of pebbles but if you shake it then the larger petals, pebbles will rise to the top. And that's what really meditation to me is. It's like during that time, thoughts absolutely come up. I don't just sit there with this blank brain and levitate, <laughs> but it's like thoughts come in, but now I see them. And sometimes it takes a minute to be like, oops, I'm thinking. But typically the thoughts that come in are these bigger things. It's like, hey, it's like your subconscious is, you need to look at this thing. Here's this thing you said yesterday and you weren't being thoughtful in it and now you need to reach out and apologize or whatever. These big things come up. And so that's where it's like, oh gosh, I'm meditating badly because these big, I'm thinking about big things like on accident. Oops. <laughs> like, yeah, <I'm> <laughs> so it's like, it's this beautiful thing. And so that's how I'd like to try to describe it is practicing, recognizing thoughts. And then that's what gives you power during the day to recognize emotion. Like, oh, I'm anxious right now. I'm fearful right now. Why am I afraid? And it gives you just space around your thoughts. And so then you can respond to them and decide what you want to do about them instead of just feeling controlled by them. And that's, that's the power it had for me. And that's why, again, I just, I feel like it's like my mission to, to explain it and share it as much as I can. It's good therapy. Yes, it is. I mean, it's truly. I, to be with yourself and connect. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's just giving your, giving yourself permission to spend time connecting with yourself and not viewing it as selfish. It took me a while even to realize that, but it's like, I'm a better person and better able to be strong and reasonable and kind to other people when I'm good to myself. And so it took, it really did for a while. I felt like it was selfish for me to, to tend to myself. <laughs> But I, I finally got over that. Yeah. Mostly. <laughs> take care of other people. They don't take care of themselves. So. Truly. I mean, I remember my mom saying that the whole lesson of, you know, if you're on an airplane, you put the oxygen mask on yourself before you put it on your child for a reason. Because you yeah, have a child. Exactly. exactly. So it's that same, same idea. Yeah, definitely. So, um, on your social media, you talk about uh, meaningful conversation and the good exchange. You mm -hmm. talk about establishing this meaningful com conversation. Is there anything that occurred that just made you feel like, oh my gosh, you know, social media needs this. We need this element of having meaningful conversation instead of the chatter, the criticisms, the opinions that we throw out over a situation that triggers our emotions, mm -hmm. you know, what, um, what helped you establish um, an, an idea to be able to put this on social media and how are you beginning this, the meaningful dialogue that I think we, it is very important and we definitely need. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I would say, yeah, there's a few things there, but vulnerability <laughs> is the word that comes up first. And I think I definitely have kind of a love hate with social media for sure. <laughs> um, but I do, I see it as a tool that can be used for good or for evil. And so if I just say like, Ooh, social media is bad. I'm not going to do that. Well then I'm not, I'm saying I'm not willing to use this tool and so I've really, I'm, and I still am like working to embrace it <laughs> and feel like I'm doing it well. But the people that I see who do it well, who I really admire are the ones that are vulnerable, that are showing, here's the good stuff, here's the bad stuff, oh, here's this thing I learned. And so 
as I find my voice, that's what I'm wanting to do is bring, hey, so like even just an example is last week, I shared a post and I'm also learning, like I'm trying to like get my personal social network and figure out like how to make sure I'm not just preaching at my friends all the time. Right. <laughs> but, hey, yeah. Here's this forum for conversation and feel free to join me over here. So I'm kind of doing, but what I see is Facebook vastly rewards my personal posts over my little good exchange posts. So I'm still figuring it out. But I did a personal post and all this dialogue started. I asked the question, what's something that you've learned about yourself over the last six weeks or something surprising? And so a lot of people responded with like really cool, deep things. And one of the things I shared was just my own views on, and I use the word feminism, I think because I just have been kind of, you know, it's one of those things, you feel like you have an understanding and then something shows you like, whoa, I had no idea. <laughs> so I feel like my eyes are really open to a lot of things, but just someone made the comment, like, why are you using the term feminism? And I thought about it and I'm like, oh, really? I don't, want to use the term, I mean, I'm not trying to promote female over anybody else, really equality is the word that would be a better word. So I learned even just through that conversation, um, but there was enough people that were like, yeah, I want to talk about this. And this other woman was like, oh, I love this topic. I'd love to talk about it. So I'm going to put together a Zoom chat meeting, you know, where we can all have a discussion and then we can record it and then it'll be there. And then in a year, if something comes up, I mean, maybe that'll be outdated in a year, who knows, <laughs> but yeah. being able to share that dialogue, and what I see is dialogue alone, I mean, just giving people space and holding space for someone to share their story, I mean, that's why I'm going into coaching, is seeing, like, it's just so important to give time and attention, and just, like I said, I mean, like, the time it takes to get to know yourself, to put words around who am I? What do I want? What are my current challenges? And having to kind of focus them knowing, okay, I can't have 25 top priorities and see success in all of them simultaneously. Right. I probably pick three <laughs> or fewer maybe even and focus on those and then having accountability and that kind of thing of just like, okay, because you know how it is, you build a habit for a week and then life pulls you back in and so having a reason to check in like I mean that's why there's church every Sunday right <laughs> and so I feel like that's it's like that's caught on with me with yoga is like oh if I do it more often I will see results <laughs> duh <laughs> it's like laughable these things where it's like oh why did it take me so long to figure this out but here I am <laughs> now they say it takes um seven weeks to do something over consistently to yeah. become a habit is what they yep. say but, I don't know I've gone seven yeah. weeks and it's still then become a habit so. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, can, it can depend exactly how, how deeply it's you're right. <laughs> I think you're not alone there <laughs> Um, let's see. Well, tell us about the community you're involved in. Um, let's see. Would you liken to a metaphysical belief space community and share a, a bit more about the meaningful exchanges you wish to see and hear about in today's world? Okay. Um, yeah, well, I guess the community I'm building is kind of new. I mean, I'm definitely already a part of several different communities. So like my, my yoga studio has a very strong uh, following uh, Yoga Chikitsa in Richardson, and so, um, and then my uh, adventure travel <laughs> community is another one, and so what I like is that I think there's so much overlap between adventure travel and yoga, and really everybody that has a mind <laughs> and wants to use it better, uh, so I'm really trying to kind of connect, and instead of feeling like spread too thin, like, oh, I'm, I'm over here these days, and what's my schedule, feeling more like, okay, I'm me, and this is my offering, and it touches all of these audiences, and we all can, can relate on similar topics, irregardless of religion, or, you know, if you're religious or not, and that's really my, my goal, is to, as I'm learning these things, phrase it in such a way that it's really approachable to anyone because all these things can, I mean, 
no matter what belief system you have or if you have one can be applied and helpful to your life. And so that's where I'm, that's really what I'm working to do is make it where <laughs> it's just, yeah, if there, I'm not putting a fence up and being like, this is only for these people. Um, so that's, that's You're my goal. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's really cool. Tell us about Fit for Adventure. So Fit for Adventure, I joined a little over a year ago, and it is a female-owned adventure travel company based in Dallas. Actually, she's now moved to Leadville, Colorado, but she was in Dallas for, I mean, her whole life. But she, the, the company is about 20 years old, cool. uh, so she formed it 20 years ago, Diane Golden. And so after I had my third layoff in the corporate world, I thought, you know, this is a good time for me just to see... Wow. It, exactly. I mean, it's the kind of thing. I may be back someday, but three times it was just like recruiting. They hire a bunch of people and then, <laughs> yeah. So I was like, yeah. So, yeah. So I was like, you know, I can always go get another job in recruiting and then get laid off again. <laughs> so, so like, why don't I, like, while I'm relatively young and my body works and I like to ride and climb and I was already an adventure travel person. And whenever I'd be on trips, like really I spent so much time thinking, I want to bring my friends and family with me. And so I had my own ideas about trying to put together something. But because of the age of my son, like getting him through high school, I just thought, I don't think I want to try to build my own business right now at least. And so I Googled and found Diane's company. And so I just sent her an email and said, hey, I'm interested in, in your line of work. and do you need help in any areas? And she did. And so we quickly, I mean, we just clicked and I, she hired me or I, you know, went to work for her contract last March and went to the Boston marathon with her in April, went to Spain with her group in May, got my wilderness first aid training and yoga certification and meditation teacher training. And then did a bunch of other trips, went to Croatia, and then led hikes in Utah at uh, Bryce Canyon and Zion National Park, which had been a dream of mine to do that. That was one of the trips I'd been on by myself and thought, someday I want to come back and bring a group. And then, ta-da, <laughs> like within two years, I was doing it. So it was really, it's just been a wonderful fit. And so, you know, right now there's not a lot of travel happening, but we do have trips uh, I have a yoga retreat with another yoga teacher coming up in New Mexico in September. And right now it's looking like that's going to happen. Good. So, yes. Very Good. excited. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, but they do trips all over the world. Um, Iceland and the Tour de Mont Blanc. Uh, all sorts wow. of trips. So, yeah, feel free to check that out. Emily at fitforadventure.com. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Fair time. laughs> So we have to do yoga all the time while we're gone? Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, but that's the thing, like if I'm on the trip, I will, I'll be doing yoga in the morning or the evening and you can join me, but I won't, I won't make you, but. Oh, oh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and then, yeah, we have some trips that are specifically yoga retreats and then other ones are, you know, cycling or hiking, or whatever, but it's nice to have the option to have a morning stretch or post hike stretch and all that good stuff. It's what's, very good. A, what's a day look like? So you get up on that and you do yoga and then you eat breakfast and then you do adventures or what? How? What's so which, which, I guess it depends which trip you're talking about, but okay. some are, are a lot more active and all of them you have the option. Like on my hike uh, trip, hiking trip in Utah, there was one woman who came and she had recently had an ankle injury, but she still wanted to come on the trip. And so she just like, I think she hiked with us one day, but then the other two, she just enjoyed this big, beautiful house and, you know, a hot tub. And I mean, so it's the kind of thing, like you can come on the trip and it doesn't mean we're going to whip you and make you climb mountains. <laughs> Actually, Diane, um, before she had the company Fit for Adventure, her last name is Golden, and she had Golden Adventures, but she changed it because people thought it was for, like, seniors. Cause oh. Seniors. <laughs> oh, no! Yeah, oh, no. But, it's, but what's cool is that now she's, she's in her 60s, and a lot of her friends that have traveled with her for 20 years are like, oh, we're not really feeling the adventure travel so much, and so she's 
looking at getting bringing back golden adventures for oh, cool. the crowd that doesn't really want to do mountain climbing <laughs> right so it's really cool so now she's got these guides like me and a lot of other guides that can do the a little more adventurous trips patagonia and all sorts of cool stuff so nice oh, we can have a little really cool. soft, softer <laughs> trip offering as well <laughs> that's exciting so we we need our audience to check out fit for adventure and definitely with the number four fit number four <laughs> Four, number fit four, four adventure yeah yep. and they're doing a trip in september yep so there you yep. go we've got big bend in november and oh, wow um yeah i need to look at what all's on the calendar but there's there's a lot coming up I guess it would all be in the United States too, I guess, right now too. Uh, for now, yes, but we do. I and mean, we have trips. So we'll be back in Majorca next April and May in Spain. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, what else is on the trip? Uh, Patagonia, so Chile and Argentina. Um, hmm, I wish I had a list in front of me. <laughs> I, <should've laughs> been, I wasn't thinking about talking about all the trips. Yeah, big plans for fit for adventure that's exciting yeah, yeah that is really cool so you're gonna have fun with we're excited for you thank you thank you i'm really <laughs> loving it we need that job <laughs> <laughs> podcast travel for adventure yeah, really. yeah. <laughs> okay well today's podcast wasn't quite as quirky. We didn't ask you any, you know, do you believe in aliens or, you know, I mean, anything crazy. That's normally what we do or Bigfoot, you know, anything like that, so. which you might've seen him on your travels, but we're not going to ask. So um, <laughs> <laughs> we were more about encouraging everybody right now because of everything going on. We hope that this yeah. podcast has helped people with just therapy in general and yeah. what's going on in the world today so. getting centered and connecting to yourself while you're in quarantine or while you're experiencing fearful situations a lot of people are afraid right now and so um how can we overcome our fear and while we're in lockdown and you know some places are allowing people to go out and some are not have, some are not and some people are feeling a real sense of you know, anxiety and so um, I think the meditations and the things that you offer are a great a great start for someone who really wants to get control of their emotions and then ask themselves well why do I feel this way and how can I feel better and then to take some steps to move forward in their life and not feel stuck right now yeah absolutely I have some friends that actually have they've committed suicide right now so oh wow yeah I Before you do it. that, you need yeah. to definitely do wow. the suicide hotline, listen to, do meditation, do wow. that kind of stuff. It's never heal the yourself. end of... <laughs> yeah, there's the an opportunity years. now it's, to heal yourself and to really center yourself. Yeah. Um, even even if you feel alone, there's there's something there that you can tap into, into your own energy. So And know that your job doesn't define you. I mean, Emily's gone out and done something yeah. different. I mean, just because After you might have lost a job. The third time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Your job doesn't mean it's the end of the world. You need yeah. to go out here and end it. So, but, um, okay. So, yes, um, Emily is the Good Exchange on Facebook. And, um, Let's see. And she shares her Zoom links to Gentle Yoga, and she has a YouTube channel. So everybody, listen to Emily. Go check her out. She's amazing. And the Fit for Adventure. Got to do that too. <laughs> yes. So All right. thank you so much, Emily. Thank you both so much. It was my pleasure. Yeah, we'll talk to you again some other time. So. I would love that. I'd love All it. Right. Okay. Well, we'll check in with you 